work. It is a day to recognize those who have served. And so if you have served, if you're a veteran, if you are in the military or serving, or you have a family member who has served or is serving, please stand because we would love to recognize you. So if you, you fall in those categories, please stand. That would be great. Let's applaud those who have served, their families have sacrificed. Stay standing because we're going to pray. Don't, don't sit down. We're going to pray on, on your behalf for the, our military. Let's pray. God, you are a great God. You're worthy to be praised. And we thank you for the time we're able to worship you in song and truth, Lord. And as we look to tomorrow, what tomorrow day is for those who have served, those who gave the sacrifice of volunteering to serve our country for our freedom, Lord, and some to the point of their lives, giving their lives, Lord. So, Lord, I ask you to put a blessing over this, our, our country, over those who have served, over their families, Lord, and we continue to put our military, our government, our leaders our leadership into your hands and ask that your will be done and ultimately you will protect us from the evil, Lord, and you also protect us from ourselves. You're a great God. I thank you for those who have served and given the ultimate sacrifice for our freedoms. That's all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again, those who have served. Um, and you have uh, two in the back, wonderful married couple who both served. And uh, it was awesome. I sat next to them at the Memorial Day Parade yesterday. And it was awesome to see people run up to, um, to Milford and shake his hand. And I'm like, Elizabeth served too? Like, y'all shake her hand. But she didn't have a hat on or anything, so they wouldn't know. Um, but it was really cool to do that yesterday. We are starting a new series, as Jason said, entitled Love Does. And he's going to explain more of how that's going to work at Bowie Fest. Um, and that's going to be great. A great, great display of love, how we're going to do that there next Saturday. So don't, don't leave church early. You want to get those instructions. Love is what brings us here today. Um, that's not actually how the quote goes from the movie, but it works. Love is what brings us here today. And if anyone watched the royal wedding that happened a couple a week or so ago, um, you saw two people who got married and committed to love. Their marriage stopped the whole world, especially in that, that part of the world, for a whole day to watch their wedding. I still don't quite get it um, because no one came to my wedding just to come say, oh, there's two people getting married? Let's stop and see what happens. Um, they didn't do that. I'm not royalty, but um, I think I am. So uh, I didn't really pay too much attention to the, to the wedding. I was like, good for them. I got married. But the message that was preached at their sermon, at, at their ser I was like, oh, okay, Bishop, okay, Bishop, you're preaching now, Bishop. If y'all didn't see it, you know, usually there's like a more conservative message given, not a very like heartfelt, passionate message given on love, but the Bishop, man, he was like taking them back to like Southern Baptist Church somewhere down south. Like it was, it was great to see the uncomfortableness and people are like, what is this going on? What is this? Who picked that guy? Um, but it was great. It was one of the, one of the most televised events or watched events uh, this year, which means millions upon millions of people heard the message of Jesus Christ and his love. So that was like, I was like, go, like, take advantage of that. You won't be invited back, but <laughs> you, you took advantage of the opportunity, and you made the most of it. So that was, that was really good. Um, so if you haven't seen it, you can look it on YouTube or Facebook, uh, this message of love that was preached. Love is a subject that stirs uh, the interest of mankind since the beginning of time. I mean, literally hundreds of thousands of songs have been written about love. Hundreds, thousands of books and poems have been written about love. Countless movies, hundreds, even thousands of movies touch on the subject of love. Our, our, our world, not just our country, but our world loves love. And they all want to be loved, and they all have gone through love, the loss of love, trying to gain love, get back into love. Let's face it, love has been and will continue to be a hot topic for our world, for, our, for the human race. Some of my favorite moments of learning about love come from uh, my parents and watching them love each other through the ups and the downs and getting to see how they've grown together closely. Um, I got to watch their love, but I really got to know love through 
where you all did too, Disney. Like that's where, you know, we all learn about love. Uh, at least I, me, that's how I learned, <laughs> learned about uh, uh, love. Some of my favorite love songs come from Disney. I'm not going to sing any of them, but can you feel the love tonight, Lion King? I know there's a group in here who hasn't seen it yet, and we're going to work on that. But can you, have you, you know, can you feel the love tonight is a powerful song, uh, True Love Kiss from Enchanted. If you don't know that movie, that's a really good movie. And How Do You Know She Loves You? Like, that's a great song. Like, you haven't seen that one. A Whole New World, you know, Aladdin and a Magic Carpet Ride and that song. That was played at my wedding and some of your weddings, too. That's a great love song. And then Frozen, Love is an Open Door. I mean, come on. That's a great it's a great song. Love is an open door. I mean, I learned love through Disney, like most of you did too. Some of you are like, no, I, I didn't. I didn't. I don't like like Disney, but that's how it was in my world, in my home. Um, but I also learned love from a few country songs because my wife, you know, 15 years we've been together, be 15 years married this summer, which is craziness, which is awesome. Uh, but yes, which is good. Yeah, clap it up, clap it up. You'll clap again when it happens in July. Uh, but. 15 years we've been together, and I didn't l listen to any country music before our relationship with her, my relationship with her, but I got to learn a few love songs, and there's one that's an old one that I learned about love, or I heard about love, and it goes like this. Um, I'm going to try it, okay? Don't, don't, don't judge me. Don't judge me. But it's, looking for love in all the wrong places, I'm looking for love. Something like that? It goes something like that. It goes something like that. Look, don't judge me. I don't listen to country, but... Um, Looking for love in all the wrong places. I will keep doing this and not sing country music. Um, looking for love in all the wrong places. And that leads us to where we are, where we're going to start with today. Love. And sometimes we look for it in the wrong places. And sometimes we give love the wrong way. And sometimes we receive love the wrong way. Love does. And the natural question from that, from this, should be love does what? Like, what does love actually do? Generally, our general perception of the world is that love is an emotion, and it's felt rather than a lifestyle that's to be lived. The world will define love as, of, as being an emotion or feeling rather than a lifestyle to be lived. And that is what we are going to be preaching and encouraging you, that it's not an emotion. Love is not a, just a feeling. Love is a lifestyle that we're called to live. So if this lifestyle, what does that lifestyle look like? So we're going to be hashing that out through the next uh, three or four weeks. What, a, what does love actually do? What does love look like? If you want to turn in your Bibles, this is going to be our key verse for this morning, and it's John 13, uh, 34 to 35. It's going to be on the screen as well, but John 13, 34 to 35 says this, and these are Jesus' words as he's talking to his disciples. He says, as I give you a new commandment, a new commandment I give you, love one another as I've loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, and if you love one another, they will know that you are my disciples by how you love one another. See, we're beginning this series as we're trying to figure out what love does and what love is and also what love isn't. We're going to focus more so on what it is than what it isn't. Uh, we don't want to come and give you a bunch of a list of rules of like, love isn't this, love isn't that, love isn't this, love isn't that. We want to tell you what love actually is. If you are a bank teller and you're getting trained, they, they, you don't want to take any counterfeit money. And so they don't train you on counterfeit. They don't give you a bunch of counterfeit money. What they do, they give you the real stuff. They give you the real money. They say, this is what makes this an actual dollar note that's printed by the U.S. print, uh, U.S. government, and it has this and this. These are all the things that are for, with real money. So when you get to some fake money, it jumps to you because you handle the real stuff so much. So that's what we want to do. We want, we want to bring what is actually love is more so than what you should stay away from because we want you to recognize it when something pops up that isn't true love, that you recognize it because you are immersed in what love actually is. The world defines love as a strong emotional feeling. If you look up def the definition of love, you're going to get a definition that says love is a strong emotional feeling that we might have for another person, another place, thing, or an idea. Love is a strong emotional feeling that we have for an one another, for another person, for another place, for a thing, or an idea. See, love is not an emotion, but true love stirs emotion. 
Love is not actually an emotion. Love is actually stirs the emotions within you. Like when you love someone, you have this feeling that comes about you. That's not what love is because there's a lot of mixed emotions that go in with love. But love is not actually just an, an, an emotion. It's described as an emotion, but it's actually when you have love, it stirs the emotions within you. See, in the Greek, the literature, there's four words for love. And in the New Testament, there's three that are used out of the four definitions of love. And so they're going to be on the screen. There is phileo love. And phileo love is this affectionate love that you have for one another. This affectionate love, this brotherly love. You know, when you tell a friend that you love them or you tell uh, a coworker, if you tell your coworkers you love them. Uh, but just that affectionate, that affectionate love, like that brotherly kind of love. Then you have phileo love. That's that fondness, the desire, or to delight in something. That's like me loving chocolate chip cookies. Like, <laughs> I delight in them, especially when they come right out the oven and they're homemade. Mm. Uh, like, I delight in them when they're like that. Like, that's, that's that kind of love. And then the third kind of love that's used out of four, de- four different kinds of love mentioned in, in um, or the three out of the four that are mentioned in the New Testament is agape love. And agape love is this unconditional kind of love that God has for everyone. Has for Everyone, there's agape love that God has for everyone. So there's three kinds of love. So the word love is used 175 times in the New Testament. And this is not counting loved, E-D, um, added on to it is used. So love, just the word love is used 175 times in the New Testament. And out of those 175 times, 155 times, the word agape is used. So it's a dominant being used of how God loves us, this unconditional love that, that God has for us and we are to have for him and we are to have for each other 155 times. Then you have 19 times you have this flail love, this brotherly love that you have. And then only one time do you have that delight kind of love. And that's in Mark 12, uh, 38. Every time the Bible talks about, and especially in the New Testament, when it talks about God's love for you, your love for God and your love that we're supposed to have for each other through the Holy Spirit is agape love. So I want everyone to say Agape. There, there you go. You know some Greek. Agape love. That's the kind of love that is predominant in the New Testament. When we are, how God loves us, how we are to love God, and how we are to love each other, not in of ourselves, but through the Holy Spirit, because the love that we have for each other is not, is not unconditional. We may say it, but there are some conditions. That kind of love that we're talking about for each other through the Holy Spirit is that agape love. So now we need to understand what it requires for you to love like God loves. What does it take for us to love like God loves? And how does God love? The most popular verse in the whole Bible is John 3.16. 90-something percent of you probably know it. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, will not die, but have everlasting life, will have eternal life. Everyone kind of knows that verse or recognizes that verse, and this is God's love. This is God's demonstrating his love here. So I'm going to ask you two questions. Here's my two questions I ask. And they're not rhetorical, like you can answer them in your own mind. Do you, did you do anything of any good for God, for you to earn God's love? Did you do of anything of any good to earn God's love? And the second question is, is there anything in you that made God love you? Did you do anything to earn God's love and there's anything within you that make God love you? And your answer should be No. There's nothing that I could do to earn God's love, and there's nothing within me to make God love me. Why is the answer no? If you're like, no, my, one of mine were yes. Why would I say the answer is no? Well, God's loved. God loved the world because that's who God is. God loves everyone because that is just who God is. There's nothing that you can do for God to love you more or less. He is just that of all the different characteristics that we can understand through God and through Scripture, it's all centered around God's love, God's faithfulness, God being just. Even God's wrath is rooted in love. God being holy and all of his power is all rooted and all centered through and by his love. All those things we can find, we always think we find that their foundation is love. First John 4.16 says, and we know that we can rely on the love of God that he has for us. God is love. 
wherever, wherever lies, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So going back to John 3, 16, what is one thing? What is the one thing? There's this is just one correct, correct answer. What is the one thing that is the manifestation of God's love to the whole world? What is the one thing that God manifests itself, his love manifests, manifests itself to the whole world? It is that God gave. Because God loves, God gave. That is how it's manifest. That's how we see God's love. Without seeing this manifestation of God giving, we would just we would we wouldn't know really how, how God loves us. But God showed us that He loved us by giving. So what does love do? Love gives. Because God gave. He gave. So if we're called to love one another as Christ has loved us, as we said back uh, in the beginning and, and John, John 13, how do we show this kind of love? We are to give. If we are to love, as Jesus says, you need to love each other the way I love you. And what, how did Jesus love us? He gave. We are, so when we come to love each other, we are to do the same. We are to give. Love does what? Love gives. It gives what? It gives up of our time, it gives up of our talent, and it gives our treasure all the way to our, ultimately, our lives. We are to give our time, our talent, our treasure to God and to each other, and ultimately, we are to give our lives to God and to each other. In reality, we are giving everything to God. In reality, we're giving everything to each other. And you're like, oh, hold on. To God, got it. Yes, I'll give him everything. That's what I'm striving on. But to each other, mm, now you're messing with me. Now, now I don't like to give everything to everybody. But Jesus says we are to give. You are to love the way I loved you. You are to love each other. That way they will know you're my disciples. That way you know they're a follower of me. So you are to give up of yourself to each other. So if you're still wrestling with that, let's go through this process. Now, can you do that? Can you earnest? Can you honestly say, I can do what Jesus just said? See, for God, it's easy. It's his nature. But we as a church, can we love with that same kind of love that God has for everyone? As an individual, can you love other people the way God loves other people? Can you do that? You might say, mm, I'm not sure. I, I just, that's kind of difficult. That's kind of hard. God, if he's called us to this, check this out. Everyone here, you want to say this. God has never commanded anyone to do anything that he has not already empowered them to do. God has never commanded anyone to do anything that he has not already empowered them to do. So if God is calling you to love and, lo and what does love look like? It means to give. And you're like, I'm, I don't think I could do that. He's like, no, no, you can't do that because I've already given you what you need to love people the way I've called you to love them, the way that I've shown you in an example I've given to you. You can do it. I've given you the ability and the power and equipped you to do this. We have to understand this. And these are questions I'm going to ask you. I need you, I need you to respond. Is the Holy Spirit, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, is the Holy Spirit living within you? Yes, good job. All right, you're with me. All right, so, okay. Is the Holy Spirit God? Yes, so we learned last week, we, the last, last few weeks, we talked about that in the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit living inside of you, and the Holy, you said yes, and the Holy Spirit is God. Say yes, okay. So then, is love living inside of you? Yes, all right, love is living inside of you. Great, awesome, we're on the same page. So if love is inside of you, the only thing you have to do is allow love to flow out of you. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, and you say, I have the Holy Spirit, and we say, okay, the Holy Spirit is God. Yes, the Holy Spirit is God. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is God. Can we say that God is love? Yes, then love is in you. So if love is living in you, the only thing you have to do is let love live out of you. If it's in you, it's for it to live out. That is how would you do that. And how, can, how is that possible? Okay, I got it. I got the Holy Spirit in me, and that is God, and God is love, because we just read that. And so God, God is living in me. Love is living in me. So how do I get the love to live out? I'm so glad you asked that, because that is, that is the key. This is what separates a human love and this God kind of love that we're talking about. It is, this, the key is this, that love is a direct connection to faith. 
Love is a direct connection to faith. This agape love, unconditional love, is direct connection to faith. You cannot have this agape kind of love, this God kind of love, without faith. Because you don't feel you're in love sometimes. Sometimes you don't feel the love within you. That doesn't mean that you can't love the way God has called you to love. Sometimes you don't feel it. Sometimes I don't feel like God is, I don't feel God's presence in me. Even though I know it in my head, some, sometimes in my heart and in my being and my feeling, I don't sense it. I don't feel it. And then, so how am I going to be able to go love the way God's called me love? If I can't feel or sense it, it's because of faith. Faith living through me allows me to love even when I don't feel it. Even when I'm like, mm, this is hard. This is difficult. So since we have this love, this capital L love, not lowercase love, not like this lowercase love, like I love you and like how I love my life, but this capital L love, Holy Spirit, God feeling love within us, you're able to take the, the steps of faith to allow love to flow through you even when you don't feel like it. I, this is not, look, this is, this is how I see it. This is, this is not like, don't, 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 don't go quote me and say, but this is my sense, my feeling. When Jesus was hanging on the cross and Jesus is giving up his life, I get a sense, I, now, I'm not perfect, but maybe Jesus was. But if I was, let's say this, if I was on a cross, the last thing I would think about is loving the people who are hurting me. I wouldn't feel like it, just being honest. I don't like, I don't, I don't like loving people who cut me off in traffic, let alone like, let me die for them. Like, I don't feel it. But because of my faith I have in God, he, his love is able to come through, even when I don't sense it, even when I don't feel like it. Hebrews 11.6 Hebrews 11, 6 says this, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. I'll say it again. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It didn't say without love. It didn't say without love is impossible to please God. It is faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So here's a question. Do you want to please God? Yes. We were all going to say that. Not all of us are like, sign me up for an unpleasing God. I want to make God angry. No, we want to please God. Cool. Me too. Now, do you want love to flow out of you? Yes. If that is the case, then you need faith. That's the only way we are able to please God. That's what the Bible says. This is not Dion's word. Hebrews eleven six 6 says the only way to please God is through faith and with faith. This means when you're at your worst moment in your life. This means when you are at your lowest moment. This means when you're at your painful, most painful time of your life. When you're feeling the most alone in your whole life, and you may not feel love at, at all, your faith makes it possible to please God. Your faith makes it possible to love others. That's the difference. That's that agape love. This is the love that covers a multitude of wrong. This is the love that covers a multitude of sins. 1 Peter 4, 8 says, Above all, love each other deeply because love covers a multitude of sin, covers over a multitude of sin. Love does. Love does what? Love gives. How are we to love with the love of God that he has called us to love with? It is through Jesus Christ. Faith in what? Faith in Jesus Christ. It is through the faith in Jesus Christ and through his word that will allow us to love the way that God calls us. It will allow us to give the way God has called us to give. As Jesus told his disciples, I have a new commandment for you. You are to love each other, and you're to love each other the way I've called you, that I've loved you. You're like, oh, that's kind of crazy love because I don't even, like, your love is crazy, God. Like, Jesus, your love is, like, mind-blowing. How am I going to, oh, you do it through the faith through me and through my word and let the Holy Spirit live through you, and you'll be able to do it even when you don't want to. By drawing near to God and God drawing near to you. Love covers a multitude of sin. Love, that kind of love forgives. This is this unselfish love that is, has that concern for others that will make you sacrificially give for others' well-being. This love covers a multitude of wrong. This love is when someone has wronged you, when someone is someone is like gotten, like someone is really rubbing you the wrong way, when someone has done you dirty, someone has done you dirt, someone's throwing shade on you, someone is just trying to cut you down, someone is purposely trying to hurt you. This kind of love covers. 
that sin. This kind of love covers that kind of wrong. Literally, the translation for this word cover literally means hides. That kind of love hides that wrong. It's not saying it's not there. It's not saying you know, it doesn't exist. Like if we took, if I took this chair and I covered it over with one of these black drapes, it covers it. It's hiding the chair. We still see that there's a chair there. Like we understand there's a chair there, but it covers it. If this chair was sin, we would put this chair there and put, put the chair and they said this chair is sin, but love covers this chair. Love covers the sin. It's not just making it go away. It's not just making it say, oh, now they can just do what they want. We have to, it, it, no, no, no. It hides it. I no longer see the sin. I no longer see the chair. Yeah, it's there. I, yeah, it's, it's there. It's like when you're playing high go seat with your kids and they're hiding, but they're really not. You're like, I see you behind the, the, the lamp pole. Like, I see you. You're right there. You're like, I, it, it, it's covering you a little bit. Like, like, we still acknowledge, yeah, yeah, it's still there, but it covers it. It makes it though I don't reckon, I'm not recognizing that no longer as sin the wrong. I'm recognizing it as the love that covers it. That is powerful. That is powerful for those who have wronged you. There's power for those who are coming at you the wrong way. There's power for those who not have loved you the way that God has called all of us to love each other. It's huge. That kind of love will set you free. It is, I can't say it enough. It's the love that God manifests himself and say, because even while you were still sinning, even when you still were doing wrong, I gave. That's that kind of love that covers a multitude of sin. Jesus Christ, that our kind of faith, that Christ, it, it doesn't turn a blind eye to it. It doesn't turn a blind eye to the, to the wrong and the sin. It's not like, just keep doing this over and over and over to me. No, it is not that kind of love. That is not the love that Jesus is talking about. But it sees it and accepts the fault of those who are wrong. Say, so I still see that there's a chair there. I, know I, cover, I still see it, and I, but I accept it. But I see love. I'm going to view you in love. When you're allowing love, when you're allowing this perfect love, when it is in you and you're allowing God to flow out of you, this love, you will obey God and you won't live in fear. Those are the two things, the two reasons why we won't love the way God calls the love is two. One, we won't obey. And second, a fear. And sometimes we don't obey out of fear. And sometimes because we don't obey, now we fear. That's what causes us not to love. When we start looking selfishly, we start looking internally, we start, it's out of fear. We're out of fear of what, what that's going to do to me or how's that going to put me off or how they're going to look at me or you know what they did to me. And that's, that's fear talking. And that causes us not to obey. God's word says the total opposite. It says the total opposite. What does perfect love do? Perfect love casts out fear. It is that perfect love. Now, the question is, is that perfect love living inside of you? If we are to say, we go back, backtrack, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. Yes, follow Jesus Christ. That means the Holy Spirit lives within you. Yes, the Holy Spirit lives within me. Okay, the Holy Spirit lives within you. That means God lives within you. Yes, God lives within me. Okay, so God is love. Yes, the Bible says that God is love. Awesome. And is God's love perfect? Yes, his love is perfect. So it's perfect love in you. Yes, it's in you. Are you letting it flow out of you? If that is the case, if we do that, we backtrack, it's perfect love flowing out of you. Because what does perfect love look like? It gives. Perfect love gives. And how does it give? Unconditionally. That's a crazy kind of love, but that's what love does. That was agape love actually. That's what it actually does. And that's what it actually will continue to do. Are you able to let this perfect love flow through you is the question. And I'm, am I able to let this perfect love flow through me in every situation, in every, in every way? We look at Jesus' life, and we're like, Gee, Jesus was on the cross, and he's forgiven the dude next to them. And he's telling, the, he's telling God, God, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Like, Jesus, you're love. Like, that's, that's that crazy kind of love. That's that truly unconditional love. And the only way we can do that is through the Holy Spirit. 2 Timothy 1 Seven, and this is the New King James Version, the translation. It says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power. He's given us a spirit of love. He's given us a sound mind. 
1 John 5, 1 through 5, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the fathers loves his children as well. And this is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his what? His commandments. By carrying out his commandments. That is obeying. In fact, this is a love for God to keep his commandments. If we love God, you keep my commandments commandments. He said, if you love me, you will obey me. If you love me, you will do what I say. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. You will keep my word. It continues on. And his commandments are not burdensome for everyone born of God overcomes the world. Anyone born of God overcomes the world. Why? Because Jesus Christ has overcome the world. Jesus Christ has cast out all troubles. Take heart for I have overcome the world. Jesus says, you can take heart because I've overcome the world. And so if I've overcome the world, you have overcome the world through love. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the son of God. Love obeys God and love casts out fear. Love obeys God and love casts out fear. These are the two two things that go together. And with these two things, we're able to love God the way he's called us to love him and each other, which is to give. Love obeys God in every possible way. Love treats others the way God has commanded. Love is the, God's love is the love that serves to him and to each other. And when we are engaged in these, it is then that that fear has no place in our lives. After all, God is for us. God is love. He wants us to have victory. And by his grace and by his power, neither he nor us nor we shall be disappointed because of his love. 1 John 2, 5 and 6 says this. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Love does what? Love gives. Can you love with that type of God's love? Can you love with that type of God's love? My question for you is that, and I hope our answer, your answer is yes. I fall short sometimes, but yes, I give. I give and I agape love of this unconditional love. There's actually Jason uh, Craig, my right-hand man, Jason, best friend Jason, he told me about this book called Love Does. And the series really is loosely tied to the book, really doesn't. It's more like, that's a, that's, I think God wants us to talk on that and preach on that. But there's this book called Love Does, and I'm reading this book, and there's a, there's, a chapter, there's a section of the book that just like rang home to me um, from the author. And this author describes how he was, he was just this, this kid that in high school, he didn't quite fit in and he just was not like doing great in school and he really cared less about school. All he wanted to do was go and be out and rock climb and just be out in nature. And so there was this guy that was at a school all the time and he didn't know if he was a student or not. Like this guy was always hanging out and come to find out this guy worked in Young Life Camp or Young Life Ministry, which is a ministry or organization that reaches teenagers right where they are with the love of Jesus. So he found that out and this guy befriended him and all this time, he was just loving on him, just hanging out with him, just encouraging him. And then one day, the author says that he's like, had enough, done. I'm not going back. I'm not going back to school. I'm just going to go and live and be a rock climber. This is what he wanted to do. He wanted to be a rock climber. And so he's like, I'm leaving. I'm leaving school. And so he just packed his stuff. He's like, I'm just leaving. Got his car. I'm just leaving. Tell, and tell his parents I'm out. But for some reason, he felt like he needed to go back and tell this young life guy that he was leaving. The only person he was told that he was leaving. Went to his house, said, I'm leaving. I just want you to know, I'm leaving. And the guy's like, answers the door, and he's like, you're leaving? He's like, yeah, I'm leaving. He's like, hold on one sec. And so the guy stands there, the author, he's standing on the front porch just waiting for the young life guy to come back. He comes back, and he's like, got his book bag with him, got his camping bag with him. He's like, I'm going with you. 
He's like, I'm with you. He's like, what? No, I'm going with you. He's like, you're just going to go with me? He's like, yeah, we're leaving, right? He's like, I guess. I guess we're just going to go. So this young life guy just goes with him. Just left. He's like, well, how are you going back? He's like, oh, don't worry about it. I'll get back. I'll just ride. I'll get in your car. Long story short, this guy's trying to, trying to figure this out, and he's like, oh, I'm just going to go and, and, and get a job in the valley, and I just want to climb at, at Yosemite Park. I just want to climb this mountain. I just, want to, I just want to be a rock climber. I just want to live this rock climber life. He's like, bro, I'm in. We're going to do it. I don't even know anything about rock climbing, but I'm in. And so he goes, and this guy's just, he can't get a job. He climbs the rock a couple times. He's like, and the guy's like, so what's next? He's like, bro, I can't get a job. I'm running out of money. Maybe I should just go back and go to high school. He's like, all right, whatever, I'm in. So they go back. They go back home. And he goes back home, and he's like, he just goes back to the Young Life leader's house. He walks in, walks in with him. And when he walks in, he, his girlfriend hugs him. He's like, oh, you're home. And he's like, oh, great. But he's, the, the kid, the author starts looking around, and he recognizes that there's like gifts half open, and there's like dishes on the table, and there's like a microwave that's in a box, and there's like stuff. And like it clicks to this teenager, to the author, that this guy had just got married, and all these gifts were their wedding gifts. And this young life guy left all that because he saw a kid who was about to walk out into no, no man's land. He left with them. They were only gone a day or so, a night or so, but that resonated with the author so much. He says, what is this kind of love? Like, you just got married, bro. Like, you just got married. Kind of eloped kind of thing. Kind of like this small wedding kind of thing that happened. Like, you just got married and you left your fiance, you left your new bride at home to come with me because I said I was leaving? He's like, I told you I was with you. I'm with you. God is with you. And all our boneheaded ideas and all the things that we come up with and all the things that we're like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and we fall short, we get worried, we get off the path. God's like, I'm with you. I'm with you. And you're like, what? You're with me? Do you know what I just did? You know, I, I'm with you. And I was wrestling with this all week, and I'm going to follow what the Holy Spirit says. Whew. Marty Minton, I'm with you, bro. I'm with you. I read that story, and I just, I'm with you. And y'all like, what is that going on? <laughs> Nothing going wrong, but my story with this guy is just one of God calling me at 19 years old, and this punk kid who was just giving his mom headache, uh, comes to the church, and the youth pastor, I was a youth intern, and the youth pastor, the, the mom was talking to the youth pastor, and he's like, hey, Dione, I got a project for you. Like, okay, cool. Uh, and it was Guy Marty. And uh, whew, And it's been a journey ever since. And as God is with me, I'm with you. To the end of the earth, I know this is kind of, I was like, I'm not saying this. God, I didn't even talk to him about it. I'm with you. And just how God is with me. And how God is with you. Love gives. To the moon and back, love gives. So our encouragement, our prayer to you, especially as we go out to Bowie Fest, are you going to give? Are you going to live that kind of love that is through the Holy Spirit, through your faith, that perfect love, to love others the way God has called us to live. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the great God you are, how much you do love us. And God, uh, the glimpse of the kind of love that we love each other with sometimes is, is fails in comparison and the love that you love us with. God, you... It's not good enough just to have your love. A lot of us stop there. We rest there. It's like, God loves me. And I love God. That is awesome. Like, man, it's, it's a, I, there's no greater feeling to have God's love. 
But Jesus, that is why you said, I have a new commandment. Not just love me, love others the way I have loved you. And that's like, whoa, whoa, God. I know, I know how you love me. Like, I know what a messed up and wretched person I am and I can be and you love me and that is great. Like, oh, I'm made complete and holding you. But now you're telling me to do that for others? Mm. God, there's some hard people to love. He said, like, mm-hmm. You're not easy to love either. Like, mm-hmm, that's right, God. But God, there, there are some people who've done me dirty. God says, mm-hmm. You've done me dirty too. Like, yes, right, God, I, I have. But God, there's some people, God, there's some people who actively are after me. I have enemies. God said, mm-hmm. You've been an enemy of mine too. God says, love them the way I have loved you. It may be your spouse. It may be a family member, a boss, an old relationship. Those who are just opposing you. Those who oppose you just because you're a Christian. God says, you're to give. You're to love. That way they know they're a follower of me. And it points, all glory will go back to me. Love gives. God, give us the ability to give of all of ourselves and all of our lives for those who are married to our spouses, to our children, and to each other. That perfect love will flow through us and we will be made complete in this love through this faith, through Jesus Christ. We thank you. I'm excited for this series. I'm excited for the healing that's going to happen, God. I'm excited for the, the words of encouragement that happen, the conviction that will happen, Lord. I thank you for the love that we have had and the love that we will get, but ultimately the love that you're going to make perfect and that you have made perfect through us, through Jesus Christ. You're a great God. It's all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.